What's up, everyone? It's Edward from Bar Stars, and today I'm here with a special guest, Russian Red, also known as Jessica. <laughs> You're now listening to the Bar Stars Podcast, where we explore health, longevity, and performance. I'm your host, Edward Checo, and we'll be diving deeper into topics I've been studying for the last 10 years as a catastatics expert. What's up, everyone? It's Edward from Bar Stars, and today I'm here with a special guest, Russian Red, also known as Jessica. How are you doing today, Jessica? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? <laughs> Thank you Jessica, for having me. Jessica, how would you describe your athletic talents? Because I had a hard time coming up with an intro because you're, you're so talented across so many different fields. Um, well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. But um, I basically have a background in rhythmic gymnastics. That's what I like started with when I was four. And then when I finished, I was like 17. After that, I kind of just like started to just experiment with things that I've always found like really cool which was like hand balancing. That was like the first thing that I was like, this is awesome, I wanna do this. So like I would start practicing handstands a lot. And then my friend showed me pole fitness and like I thought it was like really cool seeing girls like doing pole dancing as like, you know, an actual competitive sport. It was like really amazing to see how strong these women were. Um, so I started to do pole dancing and then I got into calisthenics and that's pretty much it. <laughs> And you, you won a, a world championship, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're too modest. <laughs> All right, so let's take it back. So at what age did you start gymnastics? Um, I was like four. Yeah, that's when my dad put me into gymnastics, and I was, yeah, pretty much doing that until 17. And you competed like at a high level, right? Uh, yeah, I represented the U.S. I was national team three years. Um, yeah. That's huge. Thank you. <laughs> so, so what type of gymnastics you did? Rhythmic. All right, so for some people that might not know, I definitely know, but okay. some people that might not know, how do you describe <laughs> so, gymnastics? Uh, rhythmic and artistic gymnastics are two very different sports, and they're commonly, um, rhythmic gymnastics tends to be like commonly uh, mistaken for artistic, where it's like, you know, the balance beam, the bars, uh, flipping, like we don't do any flips in rhythmic gymnastics. We're not allowed to do any flips. Uh, we do more like, very extreme flexibility like contortion type um with uh basically like ballet um background with uh apparatus like wow i can't even speak right now but it's just like basically um extreme contortion with dance like you're performing with an apparatus which is hoop a ball clubs <clears throat> ribbon and a rope so you have to like basically learn all of those skills throughout your gymnastics career. So we would compete with all of them um, at some point, usually when we, <clears throat> sorry, usually when we compete, it's like the, like we usually compete with just four apparatuses, not all five. And you get to pick the four? No, you don't. It's like every year um, it's picked for us. So it's like one year it's like ribbon, rope clubs and ball another year it's like without the rope or without the ribbon or without the clubs it's like switches on so how's training like a lot of stretching right yeah a lot of definitely a lot of like flexibility and mobility um we usually like <clears throat> do ballet every other day as well because it's like a lot of the base is ballet base um and dancing as well uh we do like a lot of apparatus work so it's like a lot of training with the equipment that we're going to be competing with um it's a lot of multitasking that's for sure because it's like you have to be able to toss the equipment and then do like three rotations or like a jump in the air and then catch it at the same time afterwards so it's you know it's very intense <laughs> yeah it, it takes yeah. it takes coordination for sure and how many hours would you train as when you did gymnastics um, it would vary. Uh, most of the time it would be four hours, but there are days where we would train for five hours. So like on weekends, it would usually be five hours. Um, 
and during the weekday four because we have school. But like when I lived in Chicago during the summer, for example, we had two training sessions a day. So it would be like three to four hours in the morning and then three to four hours in the evening with like an hour to two hour break in between. Wow. Yeah. Were, you were in Chicago just for this or? Yeah. So I moved to Chicago for like two years um, to train for the Olympics. So basically I um, was part of a team where we did synchronized gymnastics. So it was five girls on the carpet doing synchronized movements. Um, and we would travel to other countries to compete for like the world cups and the world championships. And then we had like qualification for the Olympics and we didn't make it, but that's still huge. Yeah. <laughs> Did the government pay for like your move um, to Chicago? So USA gymnastics covered, um, most of the expenses. So like they would pay for where I lived and they would pay for, um, like, they paid for everything except for like electricity and food. How old were you? I was 15, no, 14 at the time. And I went back to New York when I was 16. It was like a dorm with all the, the whole team? Uh, no, it was just, I was living with one of my teammates. So it was like me and my teammate lived in a small apartment in Chicago. Yeah. Was it fun? Uh, it was fun, but it was very intense <laughs> because it's like you know moving away from your family and living for two years in a different you know state and being so young and going to three high schools <laughs> it was like a big change for me um and like sometimes missing two weeks at a time of school and like getting back and like trying to like get back to what you were learning it's like it was you, a lot you missed the school because of the training I would miss school because of the competitions. So like sometimes there would be two competitions back to back. So you would spend one week um, at one competition and then you would take a flight to the next competition. So it'd be like two weeks out of school. Was it hard to pass like that? Do they bring a tutor with you? No, it just you got to study by yourself while you're there. So it was like, you know, you're focusing on school, but you're also focusing on the competition. So it would get like a bit intense. It's a lot of responsibility for a teenager. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> Do you, what would you say that you had fun during that whole gymnastics uh, period of your life? Um, I definitely had fun. Um, but it was, it was a bit intense also like with just how extremely different it is like with your coaches. Like it was, um, it was, I was like with a brand new coaches, you know, I'm used to my old coaches in New York. So it's like, you go to a different state, you have different coaches and, um, they can get very extreme on you. So it's like uh, your self-esteem kind of drops. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen some stories of like child gymnastics, how the coaches are like really, really tough. Yeah, it's like, um, it's not like they're physically abusive or anything. Um, it's more of like emotional abuse and verbal abuse, but I mean. Give an example. Um, just constantly saying something about like your weight and it's like i understand like if the your weight is actually an issue but like the way you say it or the way you approach it also matters considering like you're a teenager going through puberty um so it's like they will i've literally been told that um i should put a lock on my fridge and stop eating or by your, by your coach by my coach or and how old were you when you heard this 15 um or like, I need to stop like eating so much or like, I look like a cow or like, um, I'm three times bigger than last year, which is like, not true. <laughs> but like, I don't know, it would get like, they would, they would say like meaner things, like can't really think of them right now, but like, it would definitely um, affect your self-esteem because you actually start believing that you're this kid who's like overweight, but in reality, you're nowhere near overweight. So, yeah. That's intense. Yeah. Do they put you on a special diet to, or you're um, free to roam to eat what you want? Just you'll be discouraged verbally. I mean, they never um, would like actually like tell me exactly what to eat or anything like that. It was more about just like watch what you're eating. And it's like, OK, um, I'll try. But like me as a kid, like 
oh, should I have a salad or should I just have this bar of chocolate so I can get some energy? And of course, like being a kid and not really like thinking, you know, how this is actually wrong of doing that. Like I would actually end up eating like just the chocolate bar. And then it like messed up my entire diet growing up because now I'm like, I have the same mentality. I'm like, I'd rather eat this chocolate bar and like rather than having like an actual healthy meal. And yeah. So it's like, it doesn't really benefit. Kind of ironic that they won't coach you like how to diet and then um, criticize you in the same aspect. Yeah. I mean, they've had, um, like, I remember one time we were like um, at an Olympic training center. So like a lot of times we would go to Olympic training centers in Lake Placid or in Colorado. So I remember in Lake Placid, they had like a dietitian actually come in and like give us um, like information on how to like properly you know, eat. But a lot of the stuff that she would say was for a normal person, um, not for rhythmic gymnasts. And rhythmic gymnastics is very common for um, a lot of girls to be like underweight um, because we like, like in many sports, there's um, a specific look. And in rhythmic gymnastics, it's like you have to be very skinny tall like very lean legs like everything was just very like petite so for the diet that she was giving it's like 2,000 calories a day for us it was more of like you have to eat like 1,500 calories a day like we want you to look smaller so it's not like anybody actually was allowed to follow the diet that was provided got it yeah like, I remember, like, the coaches would make faces when the dietitian would say, you guys can have some ice cream. And the coaches were like, no. <laughs> like, no, they cannot have ice cream. Um, but, yeah, I mean. Do you remember what you used to eat, like, in a, on a regular day? Oh, yeah. Just give oh. us a, a random day. <laughs> or would you, you ate okay, so, like, I would wake up and have half a bagel with a cup of coffee, train four hours, have, like, um, I remember I would go to like a store, like a, I don't remember. I would just go to like the store and get like cosmic brownies and like the honey buns. And I would literally get like two of those and eat those. And then <laughs> I would come back after my other training session and just have like cereal or just like a bunch of crap, like nothing that was actually going to help my body recover. It was just like empty calories, just a bunch of sugar. But you're training a lot of, so it was like four, eight hours a day you were training? Um, sometimes eight, sometimes seven, like depending, like sometimes it'll be three hours and three hours. Like it, it would depend on how long our coach would like want to keep us at the gym. Um, yeah. It's kind of crazy that you're competing at such a high level eating like honey buns. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> like, I'm sure the other girls, they had like, you know, they were, a lot of the girls were also with their families. So like. They had their parents, you know, make food. So, like, they always came home to, like, an actual dinner. Me, I would come back and it's like, you know, I'd had to make food myself. And I also don't really know how to cook. Like, I only know how to make eggs or something. So, like, I would be like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'll just, like, <laughs> eat a honey bun or, like, I'll eat chocolate or, like, everything that's just garbage <laughs> for your body. Especially when you're, like, an athlete. Yeah working training at like very intense yeah of course of course yeah all right so you did gymnastics since you were four to 17 you said mm -hmm. and what made you stop um so it's very expensive like in the states in europe rhythmic gymnastics is like very well known it's like very popular so there a lot of times everything is paid for and covered um but when i came back from chicago to new york i stayed one more year to compete but i had to pay for everything because now usa gymnastics doesn't cover the expenses since I'm not really representing the U.S. anymore. It's more about just me getting back to like competing, whatever. Um, so it was really expensive. And then on top of that, it was time to go to college. So it's like college or gymnastics, you know, so I picked college. Do you have friends that still do it? Um, no, uh, usually like in rhythmic gymnastics, people quit fairly early, like 20 is already considered like, wow, you're like old in rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> um, like the oldest rhythmic gymnast, I believe, was like 28 when she quit. 
because it takes a toll on your body. Like, you know, it's very extreme flexibility. Flexibility goes away with time. And especially when you've trained your whole life, it's like so many injuries, like so many athletes, like so many of the girls have back pain, hip pain, like, because it's very like, you know, intense on the body. You have any lasting injuries from your gymnastics? Yeah, when I quit, I actually also quit because I had um, tendonitis in both of my hips. Like, I was just in excruciating pain. <laughs> um, my last competition was, like, so painful. I was just, like, crying from how badly my hips were <laughs> just... Is it better now? Um, A little bit better now. Like, I still feel the pain. Like, I can't do you know, very extreme splits because I start to feel the pain, but it's nothing compared to like my last year as a gymnast. Yeah. All right. So 17, you, you leave gymnastics. Is that when you started doing handstands? Um, no, I started handstands a year later. So I took like a year gap because once you quit, you're kind of like, what do I do now? Like this was my entire life. Like this is all I've ever known was being a rhythmic gymnast and training hours and hours and hours my whole life. So I took a year break, I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> um, and then I was like, all right, time to get back. So <laughs> I started going to the gym and literally just using the treadmill. Like I had no idea anything about weightlifting, nothing. Um, and then I was like, all right, well, what do I want to do now? I'm like, I've always wanted to learn handstands. Like when I did rhythmic, I was able to hold a handstand for like maybe eight seconds maximum. Um, but like it was only in like a scorpion position. Like I could never stand with my legs straight. Um, so I was like, why don't I work on that? Like might as well improve my handstand abilities for potential gigs in the future. So I started training handstands every single day. Is that day. the way you looked at it? Like, oh, maybe I could yeah. get really good at this and get gigs. Exactly. Like I, um, I was like a huge fan of Cirque du Soleil as a kid. And yeah. like my favorite, one of my favorite acts is when there's like, the two acrobats doing handstands like on each other. I thought that was like the coolest thing in the world. So I was like, I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. Like I, I wanted to get a one arm handstand. That was like my dream. <laughs> so. So, you, so you're practicing at the gym now. Yeah. So now I'm like at the gym. So after I would run the treadmill, <laughs> I would go like into the studio. Like there's like this little studio um, and just train handstands. For how long? An hour to two hours. Yeah. And how long were you on the treadmill? Um, I don't know, like 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what, what's your training for handstand? You just like kind of kick up and then just try so, to hold? Yeah. So like I would first warm up, like I would spend the first 20 minutes literally stretching, like so that everything is like super bendy and warmed up. And then I would like literally just balance, just like stand there and balance. And I would like do a scorpion. Then I would try like switching my legs and like, just getting comfortable with like being able to control my body while moving around. Um, and yeah, that's all I did for the first like couple of months. And then I gradually started to like um, do like a straddle handstand and then like with legs together, like legs together was like the hardest thing for me to learn at first because I got so used to always having my back bent. So like no core was being really activated. Um, so when it was time to do like straight legs, like you start using your abs and it was like, okay, I need to figure this out. Were people coming up to you at the gym? Um, no, not really at first. No. But then gradually when I started to like learn how to press handstand or like whatever, then people were like, well, cool. Are you a gymnast? I'm like, yeah, but not the gymnast you think that I am. Like I didn't do handstands since I was five. So from that, you went into pole. What was next after the handstand? Yeah, after handstands, um, my friend showed me a video of like this girl competing in pole. And I was like, wow, that is so amazing. Like, I've never seen anybody do anything like that. It was like the coolest tricks I've ever seen. So I looked up a pole studio near my house and there was actually one literally like three blocks away. I was like, no way. Like I've walked by this studio like for a good like year and I never knew it was a studio because it was on the second floor. So like, it's like a small staircase up to the second floor. Um, but yeah, I went with my friend and we both tried it. And like, we took um, two classes back to back. We were sore as hell the next day <laughs> cause it's like extremely difficult. Um, and yeah, I started going like every other day. What was sore? 
um, the entire upper body and like your legs because like when you grip the pole you're using your muscles and your skin to grip so it's like you have a bunch of skin burns and also soreness in that area from like squeezing the pole so hard so and the upper body obviously because you're like trying to like pull yourself, pull yourself up. up yeah and when you don't really have much upper body strength it's like you obviously are going to feel it when you like did nothing but that for two hours straight makes sense makes sense yeah so then was you became a teacher at the pole studio right <laughs> Yeah, so I like, because I was going so frequently, like I was starting to improve and I was like really like motivated. It was like the first time I felt like a similar drive as I did as a gymnast, because that's what I was like looking for. I was like trying to find something that could like mimic the way I felt as a gymnast, like having that motivation to like want to get something new. So yeah, I was going like every day. And then, Are you still doing handstands or did you give yeah, up? Yeah, I okay. still, I was still doing handstands at the gym. Like I'd still go to the gym, but like now I have like a new thing to like obsess about. So you're going to the gym in the morning and then post studio after? No, it would be like, um, I had at the time I was going to school. So like I'd go to school, go to the pole studio after the pole studio, go to the gym. Cause the gym closes at 11. So like I had, like I would go at 9 PM and stay till 11. You feel like your gymnastics background gave you that kind of workout ethic? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because like, like, people start working out now and they have a really hard time getting an hour. Oh, yeah, no. You're getting in like three, four hours. Yeah, definitely. Um, like with my entire like background as a rhythmic gymnast, it helped me for sure. Because it's like the dedication that you pick up from like doing rhythmic gymnastics for so long. Like it translates into like your daily life. Like even with school, like work hard because... You're just used to working hard. That's really cool. So like in school, you would focus super hard just yeah, based because, off you've done it your whole life pretty much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and because like, if you think about it, like I would go to school in the morning and then I have a four hour training um, doing gymnastics. It's like you're forced to like pace yourself because like you come home, you're tired, but you still have homework to do. So it's like you, you learn kind of how to like push past, you know, the tiredness and like get your work done. All right, so you're a teacher at the pole studio. You're doing handstands, and Going you said you you gained some weight. Are you have you lost the weight at this point, or are you still um, at the same weight? So while I was pole dancing, um, I did lose a bit of weight, but not like substantially. I would say um, it took me, I think, maybe like six or seven months to like lose more weight, but I still wasn't like defined or anything. It was just like I was gaining strength, and it was kind of like replacing some of the fat that I put on. <laughs> yeah. So then from teaching at pole, you got into calisthenics, right? So, yeah, my boss, my from like the pole studio invited me to go to Coney Island and the bar setup was there. She had a friend who did bar tricks and like, I think he was like part of the circus or something and he was visiting. So he like wanted to like play around in the bars and she invited me. So he was doing like, I think he was doing like back levers actually and like other stuff. I wasn't like... I don't remember exactly what he was doing, but it was cool. So, like, he taught me, like, a trick or two on, like, the small bar at, at Coney Island. That's the first time I seen you. I was going to, like, the Instagram yeah. hashtag, and I seen uh, you, like, doing a, a back lever, maybe split. Like, it, was, yeah, it wasn't it was a like traditional Yeah, it was, like, the one-arm yeah. bendy version. Exactly, exactly. The, yeah. That was the first <clears throat> time I did anything on the bars. All right. So then you you left, and then did it stay with you, or you are like, oh, you know... Yeah, I mean, then one of the um, guys from the show offs team contacted me and he said, hey, like we actually train like calisthenics, like we do this regularly. You Would you like to come join us and like learn some of the stuff? I'm like, OK, I'm down to learn. Yeah, at this point, you had no calisthenics training. No. But you still did the handstand, the pole and the regular. Yes. So you're going to pick up a third fitness hobby. Yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so... And these, and these guys train all the way in the Bronx and you're in Coney yeah. Island. So if you guys aren't from New York, that's like an hour commute, hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm lucky, an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, but still that's like. That's <laughs> iron dedication. Yeah. I literally went like five times a week. Like I would go pretty much every single day except for the weekends. And how often are you? So you're training Kaisaks five days a week. How often are you training pole? Um, so like I taught pole in the morning. So I think I tra I would train pole like twice a week or three times a week at that point. Like I wasn't going as regularly because it was obviously time consuming. Um, 
And since I was teaching there two to three times a week, that would be like the only times I would train it. So like I'd teach it and then I'd stay for like an hour or two and train. And then sometimes I'd go to the gym after and like do <laughs> other stuff. You would you go know? to the gym after pole. Yes. <laughs> and then still go to the Bronx to train cast studies. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what were you eating? I, I'm guessing you're like destroying calories at that point because it's a lot so, of working out. Yeah, that was like a time when I actually was getting into like the best shape of my life because I was starting to gain muscle in ways that I've never gained muscle. Like it was nice to see like my body transition so drastically that at the time it kind of freaked me out because I'm like, oh my God, muscles, no. <laughs> but then like gradually I was like, wait a second, I really love these muscles. Like this is so cool. Like I didn't know like my back could look this way. So what I ate... um at the time, because I was so dedicated, I did change my diet and I was like, no more cookies, no more this, no more that. But like I would eat mostly a bunch of eggs and protein shakes and I don't know, just I just tried to eat clean. You didn't really, you weren't like too strict, but you try to emphasize protein. Um, yeah, I emphasized protein, but I was like strict with not allowing myself to have as much sweets as I was accustomed to, like used to. How long did that last? Like a year, two years, a year and a half, maybe. Did you just have a whole bowl of sweets at the end of that? or? No, it was just like I was slowly starting to lose motivation. So I would start to like go back to my old ways, my old habits and start binge eating. That's like my common thing is like I binge eat. I'm like an emotional eater. So <laughs> I just like eat all the time. And then it's always like bad. It's not like I'm eating actually healthy food. It's just like. There's no fun in health. No. Yeah, no, no, seriously. It's not. It's like, I'm not going to have a cucumber. I'd rather have like. This is not what I need right a now. A cake. <laughs> yeah. My feelings are hurt. Yeah. I need a pint of ice cream <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. So we'll get back to the diet. So yeah. eventually you win the 2000. What year was it that you won this, the street workout world championship? 2015. 2015. And it was a tough competition. It wasn't an easy win. It was. A lot of high-level athletes there. Yeah, I was sure. there because uh, the reason I say that is because when it, like female cast size took off, it was kind of like a slow. St yeah. By the time you got in, though, it was it was really tough athletes and it was a tough competition. Yeah, for sure. Um, how did did you change your training for that? Did you train more intensely at that point? You dropped pole or no? Um, no, I didn't drop because like I'm still teaching, so like I would still train afterwards. Like all of my videos in like the red studio, that's the pole studio. So like I always still trained on the pole so even though you're competing at this like global championship you still yeah i still train. <laughs> you still yeah. had a side hobby to your training yeah that's cool and also because i incorporate pole into the calisthenics like why would i drop it if it's gonna help me um you know in the competitions yeah yeah um but yeah so i i don't remember if i trained more intensely I think I was like, well, yeah, definitely I was training more intensely. Like I was obviously very nervous because it's like, this is my first competition and it's the world championships. And I've only been doing calisthenics for like eight months. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. It was like eight months, like maybe nine months. I don't know, but definitely wasn't a year of calisthenics. So I was training like the same thing, like four hours, but it was like more, um, because like the competition was like you have a minute to do basically like a full performance in a sense, right? Or was it was two it minutes? One minute? I feel like it was two minutes. Two minutes. My apologies. I, I really don't remember. Um, yeah, so it was like I basically came up with like two um, routines, I guess, and I just like trained the same like combos over and over and over to the music. Would you time yourself like so it's two minutes? Yeah, and timed myself. Yeah, so like. Um, because it's hard to do like back to back everything. Like I would time how long I'm allowed to have rest before I continue with the how did you, how did you determine your rest? Just how you fell or um, also you like, think the audience would get bored? No, I was, it was also like um, musically as well. Like whenever like the beat would go up or like, you know, the beat would drop, whatever. Um, <laughs> that's when I, I knew I had to do a combo. And when there was like in the in-between, I would like rest for a few seconds and then go and do another combo to like the beat drop. So that's kind of how it got it. So it. you, you, you plan your performance kind of like with the music choreograph. Yeah. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. It was, uh, 
I guess it's also like something that just comes from like rhythmic gymnastics because you have to be like musically um just like adapt to the music you have to make sure everything like matches the music perfectly. are you allowed to pick your own music and uh um sometimes but a lot of times the coach ends up <laughs> choosing the song that they want us to use got it yeah so your performance at the street workout championship had dynamic movements and statics right yeah do you train those in different segments or you just train them throughout the whole like in the format of a competition style like two minutes let me do these dynamics and then go into statics um i remember like it would just be like an hour or two of dynamics followed by statics like statics would be saved for like the end and then dynamics would be more to, like in the beginning of the training session but like it wouldn't be like two minutes of dynamics and then like go straight to statics and two minutes of dynamic it would just be like focus more on dynamic right now and then go to like the statics later that's a better way yeah which one you found more difficult personally dynamic because I have like a hard time catching the bar out of like fear, which is like stupid. I don't know. It's like, yeah. it's like a mental block. It's like, I know I have the move, but I just can't commit to like catching the bar. Yeah. And uh, you pulled the straddle planche, right? Uh, at the competition, I did straddle planche. How do you train for that? That one was with, um, I did, I remember, um, and, and you weren't able to planche before ever, right? Oh, no, absolutely not. It's a skill you picked up that year? Yeah. Um, it was, we were using the resistance bands and we would put the band where the hips were and then we would um, basically be underneath the bar doing like tuck planche push-ups and then sh slowly open up into like a straddle and then do like straddle planche push-ups, but like with the resistance band yeah, holding course. like the hips up. Um, and then gradually I started training for me personally, it was easier to do a planche for like doing a handstand straddle and slowly lowering down versus just like popping into it because I personally feel like that was so much harder for me. I think um, everyone, it's always easier coming down from yeah. a high point. Yeah. So I just practiced that like every day and like I would even practice that at the pool studios so, like after teaching, like I would literally just like spend the time like working on the planche. Um, How many yeah. different like mini planche sessions did you have throughout the day? Um, like, I mean, two, like if I did it after the pole studio training and then like when I would go train with the show offs, like I would train with them. Um, and they also like helped me get stronger with, um, like everything calisthenics by incorporating weight training, like by doing things like deadlifts, for example, like that strengthened my lower back. So like that made the planching a lot, you know, not easier, but like, you know, easier than if I didn't yeah, have yeah, any of course, of course. core strength. Yeah. Um, and like a lot of shoulder exercises, like doing shoulder presses, because like your shoulders are activated so much in planche that, yeah. So weight training also substantially like improved. Helped. Yeah. Okay. So fast forward to today. What's your training like now after all of you learned throughout your life and personal experiences? <sighs> What do you what do you feel like were the good um, things you've done in the past and what are the bad things you've done? And yeah, what do you do today? Um, I'm definitely like disappointed in myself for like um, basically like I tend to lose motivation. And when I lose motivation, I stop training. Once I stop training, I lose a lot of what I've gained. And then like I have a hard time getting back into it. So like I'm disappointed in myself for like giving up. So often throughout this like journey, like I literally have like two months where I'm like super active, training hard, like pushing myself, getting stronger and better. And then I have like the next six months is just like a mess. I'm just not doing anything, just like sitting at home, eating my pint of ice cream a day and not really being physically like active. Well, I mean, I am physically active. Like I'm always training, like I'm always either doing like weights or like, you know, handstands or something or pole, but like I give up on like the training that I had like in the beginning, which was like way more intense. Well, it's hard to manage time wise, you know, as you get older, you get more responsibilities, huh? Yeah, that's true. But um, I think it also like, I feel like I just don't feel as dedicated to the sport because it's like, um, I think maybe for me, it was also because I wasn't competing anymore. 
it's like, well, what am I doing this for? Like, why did you stop competing? Um, I wasn't really um, getting invited anymore. Um, at first I was, but it was difficult because, you know, they would say, we'll cover your flight, we'll cover the expenses. But when they ask where I'm from, I say New York, they're like, oh, that's too expensive. Yeah, for it's us. expensive flight. Yeah. So immediately I have to cover all the expenses. Well, how about local competitions? There's also like local ones like a uh, call out and. Oh, I judge the call out. Well, how about, uh, <laughs> but there's other ones. There's other ones out inside the country where it's just. Uh, um, yeah. I don't get invited to like battle of the bars or anything like that. I. you never been? I've only been invited one time and that's when I battled Melanie in um, England, in the UK. Got it. Yeah. And then. After that, like, I never heard from Battle of the Bars again. So you would compete if someone invited you? Um, I would if it's possible for it to be covered. Like, if it's here in the States, like, if I really, like, want it, I will pay for the flight. But, like, I just graduated college. So it's like I paid all my money. <laughs> Thanks. Well, not just, like, last year. <laughs> but, you know, when I was in college, it's like you pay for your tuition. Like I paid for all of my semesters. No, I told you, mate. It has, so, it has to make sense. Yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah, I'm willing to compete, but like, I don't really have the money right now to be spending because I'm totally. giving it away to college. I think everyone out there understands that. Yeah. So it was tough and it like kind of made me lose motivation because now it's like, you know, I can't compete unless I pay for um, my flight to Europe. Um, so it was kind of tough on me so i started to like give up on myself and lose motivation and not want to train anymore and i'm like what's the point like i don't get to do anything anymore um but i do love judging that's <laughs> <laughs> i really enjoy judging do you find it hard judging yeah. um it depends uh because like certain um not brands what am i talking like for example, like WSWCF yeah, has WCO. different... Oh, judging criteria. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like you're either judging one criteria, which is dynamic or static, or you're judging all of them. And then like based on what the judges like scores are together or something like that. Like, so it gets kind of tricky. What's your preferred method? I like it when there's a judge for each... Thing because I feel like it's too much like it gets a bit overwhelming when you have to like watch all the statics watch all the dynamic watch all the style watch all like I can say like gender like an overall thing I'll be like yeah that was like an eight but like that's not really super fair because it's like you got to count how long the static was and if that static counted you got to see like the dynamic and if it was like actually clean or like if they caught it or if they fell so it gets a bit like overwhelming but I can understand, like, why, I guess. Because it, maybe it's not fair if it's just one person judging dynamic, because that's just from that one person's point of view. Yeah, I, so, always, I always have trouble thinking about it. Yeah. I, like, so I, like, I, I like overall sometimes, yeah. but then I, I do get your point where it is it does help to have someone hyper-focus. Yeah. But I've seen sometimes, like, people would win, like, like they'll be really good at this specific thing, and it mm -hmm. kind of overshadows the mess ups everywhere else. Yeah. It's tricky. I feel like yeah. judging isn't perfect. Yeah. And there could be some adjustments. It's definitely I just hard, yeah. I just don't know what they are. Yeah. So like, you know, I I understand the like everybody's like method, but it does get hard. Yeah. So all right, so what's your advice for someone who wants to learn to handstand at home? Do it every single day. Well, let's be very clear first. <laughs> like, what are some, some major accomplishments you have with the handstand? You could do a one arm handstand, right? Um, kind of, I suppose. And how, have you ever timed how long you could hold a handstand for? Um, I believe the longest was a one arm handstand for 21 seconds on canes. That's amazing. On canes. <laughs> it's easier Is it easier on, on canes? canes? Yeah. Because you could grip. Yeah. On the floor, I believe my longest was like 15 seconds. All right, yeah. back. So give us the advice. Uh, all of all us right. who want to learn handstands out there. So. I think like um, a common thing I notice is like I will have people send me um, DMs saying, how do I learn a handstand? Well, the way that I learned a handstand was I actually went onto YouTube and I searched up like, you know, drills and like ways to learn handstands at home. And basically like YouTube.com <laughs> official bar stars. <laughs> official bar stars. Exactly. There you go. Like there's so much out there. Like I keep like telling people that 
there's literally so much information out there if you actually took the time to just look like just go on youtube and type in like progressions for a handstand and there's like literally like pages pages of people giving you like some really great advice i'm not saying all the advice is necessarily like you know legit but like there's definitely so much out there and i'm sure you can find if that person is like a credible person um or like a reliable person to watch um but one thing i will definitely say stop doing handstands like facing like i don't know how to say it. like basically like back up, against like, the wall yeah you prefer the other way with your face to the wall. Yeah, because when you're kicking up and your back is to the wall, like facing the wall, you're constantly like arching your back and not really using your core. So you get used to doing the banana handstand. And that's like not the best handstand that you would want to like start off with. Um, so if you turn around and face the other way and get yourself as close to the wall as possible and then keep your stomach in, and um, try to get your feet off the wall, like it will force you to be straight. So it's like, in my opinion, a better way to like get better at, you know, handstands. Um, and then of course, just practice. Like, I think people think you're gonna get it in like a week or a month and it's like, no, that takes literally months, if not years of to training, actually- Of practicing it daily. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if you want to learn a scorpion handstand, you can start with a scorpion handstand, that's fine. But literally to catch balance, it just takes practice. Like I had no idea what I was doing learning a one-arm handstand, but like just by constantly practicing it, I gradually started to understand how I'm supposed to like balance and like keep my stomach in. And I would watch videos and I would get tips from other people. So it's like, it just took time. I think people just don't have patience. The secret sauce, time. <laughs> it's just like a literally <clears throat> just time and patience and just be dedicated and do it every day and like go on YouTube. Trust me, there's so much stuff out there to like get you to do your handstands. I am yeah. loving the YouTube plug. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Jessica, where can people learn more about you and uh, what do you have to offer? And I mean, you do training in New York City, right? Um, I'm a calisthenics instructor at Brooklyn Zoo. And uh, not Brooklyn. an actual zoo. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell us what Brooklyn Zoo is? It's like a oh, it's just a giant like parkour slash ninja warrior slash God knows what. It's like a really just big gym for people to come and just. Do you teach classes or just one on one? Or um, both? I just teach classes. I mean, I can do one on one if anybody wants a private, but I teach the calisthenics class. Yeah. When, when, what time and what time and what place? I mean, we got the place, Brooklyn Zoo. Yeah, Brooklyn Zoo. And day? Six to seven is beginner. Seven to eight is mixed level. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Perfect. Yeah. And we can follow you at Russian Red. <laughs> yes. Russian.r3d. <laughs> the word Russian, dot, R, the number three. D. And the letter D. Yeah, because Russian Red was taken. <laughs> That's messed up. You, de <laughs> you, you deserve Russian red. Properly spelled. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a beautiful day and peace. <laughs>